Okay, moving ahead with using elimination to solve systems of equations, we are going to now look at situations where you have, um, where you don't have numbers that are factors of each other. So let's let's just let's look into this, and you'll you'll see what I mean. So if we look at at, uh, at number ten here, that's on the screen, it says we've got three x and two y. And then on the other one, we've got 4x and negative 5y. So look at our x's, 3 and 4's. Well, neither one is a factor of the other. And 2 and 5, same thing. Neither one is a factor of the other. So at that point, what you realize is that you are going to have to multiply both equations. So I guess it, it, this is where math can be kind of creative and where you get to kind of decide, pick your poison. Like, what do you want to do with this? So we have two, uh, the, the, the idea that you have to think about here is, um, is uh, the, the, uh, a common denominator. If you think about doing common denominators with fractions, this is kind of the same thing. So I look at my three and my four and I say, okay, I, can, um, I, I know that they both go into 12, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, multiply the one that's 3, right, that starts with 3x. I would multiply that one by 4, and I would multiply the one that's 4 by 3. And that way they both get to 12. And then the other thing you need to do is you need to say, okay, well, I'd like one of them to be the opposite of the other if it's not already like that. So with those, with your x terms, you would have to make either you would have to multiply one of them by a negative number, and again, you'll, you'll see what I mean in a second. So let's, let's do that. So there's two different ways to set this up. I'm going to set it up both ways and take a little bit of time here, but I want you to see it. So if we decide we're going to do it with our x terms, all right? So I'm going to take this 3x, all right, let's get rid of this. I'm going to take this 3x equation, and I'm going to multiply this by 4, and then I'm going to multiply this bottom one by negative 3. And the reason I'm multiplying it by negative 3 is because I want to get my x terms so that they are opposites of each other, so that they're, they're uh, additive inverses of each other. They will add together and zero each other out. And so that means one of them needs to be negative for that to happen. And I wouldn't have that if I just kept both of my factors positive. So let's do this and rewrite this. So we get 12x plus 8y minus, let's see, what is that? That's 104, or equals, sorry, not minus, what am I doing? Equals negative 104, all right? And then my other one, I get negative 12x, so that's what we were hoping for, plus 15y, because we have a double negative, equals 12. Right? So now I have a situation where my x terms will cancel each other out. All right? um, and that's, that's what I want. I want either my x or my y terms to cancel out so I get this thing down to one variable. So those go away, leave me with 0. And then I have 23y here. All right, sorry about the glitching. And then I have 104, basically just do 104 minus 12. Right, so that's going to get you to negative uh, 92, right? Negative 104 minus 12. So I just do 104 minus 12, that's 92, and then you know it's going to be negative because the 104 is larger absolute value. Divide both by 23. Obviously, this is set up so it works out, and you should get y is equal to negative 4. Okay, so now my next step is let's take this and let's put it in one of the equations and solve for it. So it really doesn't matter which one. Let's just, let's put it in the top one. So we go 3x plus 2 times negative 4 equals negative 26. So you get 3x minus 8 equals negative 26. You're going to add 8 to both sides, and that's going to get you to uh, 18, to negative 18, sorry, not positive, negative, 3x divided by 3, get x is equal to negative 6, so we have the point negative 6, negative 4, now let's put this in our top equation, or let's put it in our bottom equation, sorry, so 4 times negative 6 
minus 5 times negative 4 equals negative 4. Well, this is going to be positive 20. This is going to be negative 24. And those will indeed add up to get me negative 4 equals negative 4. And that's what we want. So this works. Right now, one thing I want to show you really quick. All right, so if uh, if you're writing writing this down, um, you might want to uh, pause the screen and and uh, copy this because I'm going to do some erasing here. I want to show you something. What I want to show you, okay, is that I can also, if I clean this up, I can also do this same process, but with the y terms. So if I look at my y terms, right, the the um, common denominator between those two, like the lowest one, would be 10, right? So I would say to myself, what do I need to multiply? Um, what do I need to multiply the top one by to get this to equal 10? And what do I need to multiply the bottom one by to get this to be the opposite of 10, which would be negative 10? So in this case, the top one, I would multiply the top one by 5, right? So 3x plus 2y negative 26, multiply that by 5. And then this bottom one, I could multiply also by a positive number because you see how their signs are different, right? They have different signs. This one is positive, this one's negative. Sorry, you probably can't see that because I'm writing all over it. But it hopefully you see that this is positive, that's negative, and they're different from each other, right? And that's what, that's what you want. And so if you go through and you do this, you're going to get yourself to the same thing. The only difference is you're going to actually solve. You will solve for your x variable first, and then you'll go through and plug in to find y by substituting. So the, it, there isn't a right or a wrong way to do this. There are definitely easier ways to do certain problems, but you, you just need to kind of practice and play around with it and and see what it looks like for you all right so let's let's keep going here let's take a look so this one right here right so i think probably the easiest and i because i try to keep things kind of small i would have to multiply this one this bottom one might get kind of big if i'm going for 15 right because i'd have to multiply everything by five um if i do the y's they it's just going to six Right, so it's it's probably it's not going to be too big of a deal. So if I say my common denominator is equal to six for that, I ask myself, okay, the top one, right? So I'm gonna erase this stuff and just write this here. So if my common denominator is gonna be six, that means I'm gonna multiply my top one by three. I'm gonna multiply my bottom one by two. And then I want to make one of those negative because you notice how both of their signs are positive. So I need one of them to be the opposite. So it doesn't matter which one you pick. So I'm actually going to, because I'm adding these, I'm actually going to make the top one negative because it will clean up this, uh, it'll clean up that negative 3 a little bit. So let's see what that does. So we get negative 15x minus 6y equals positive 9, because negative times negative. And then on the bottom, we get 6x plus 6y equals 18. Right? And so we're going to add numbers now. These go away. 9 and 18 give me 27. And then negative 15x and positive 6x give me negative 9x. So let's divide them both by negative 9. And then I get x is equal to negative 3. All right, so let's take this now and let's put it in uh, let's I don't know let's do the let's do the bottom one so 3 times negative 3 plus 3y equals 9 you get negative 9 plus 3y equals 9 we're gonna move our 9 over to the other side to get the 3y by itself by adding it you get 3y is equal to 18 right and then divide both sides by 3. And you should get y is equal to 6. So there's my answer. Let's put this into the top equation. So we're going to go 5 times negative 3 plus 2 times 6 equals negative 3. So let's see. So we get negative 15, positive 12. And indeed, 
when you add these two together, you will get negative 3 is equal to negative 3. So that works. And we're happy with that. Here is our answer. And this is just a, this is, this is how, how these work, right? I'm going to take a look at this last example here and see if we need. Oh, so I am going to stop right here and do the last example for you on a video by itself. So thanks for watching, and I hope this is helpful to you.